I hate to say this, but if Bernie Sanders and the progressives successfully leverage their power to get this reconciliation bill done, that would make Joe Biden the most significant president in American history, going back to LBJ. Let's mold in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's bog in the Central Committee right now. Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. The Democrat-controlled Senate has approved a $3.5 trillion budget framework along party lines. The final vote took place at 4 a.m. Eastern Time this morning in Washington. It came less than a day after 19 Republicans joined Democrats on passing a separate $1.2 yeah, yeah, trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill that includes $550 billion dollars in new money to help repair roads and bridges, invest in public transit, expand broadband and more. Senate Democrats are hoping to use the budget reconciliation process to pass the larger package, but they can only do that if every Democratic senator supports it. Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema has already expressed opposition to the price tag. Both spending packages now go to the House, where Speaker Nancy Pelosi has indicated she will not bring the bipartisan bill to the House floor unless the reconciliation bill is also considered at the same time. On Tuesday, Senator Bernie Sanders urged his colleagues to support the $3.5 trillion budget package, which would help expand the nation's social safety net. This legislation will not only provide enormous support, unprecedented in recent American history, to the children in our country, to the parents in our country, to the elderly people in our country, to the working families of our country, but it will also, I hope, restore the faith of the American people in the belief that we can have a government that works for all of us and not just the few. We're joined now by Ro Khanna, Democratic Congress member from California. Congress member, welcome back to Democracy Now! In our next segment, we're going to be talking to you about Afghanistan. But this happened in the last hours, two major infrastructure bills, $1.2 trillion, then $3.5 trillion dollars by reconciliation. It's hard to understand. Explain both and what happens next. Well, Amy, Senator Sanders is absolutely right. Uh, this is a historic piece of legislation that marks, frankly, the end of neoliberalism that has governed America for the last four decades. It is a major investment in the American people. This will have child care being universal. It will have community college for everyone. It will expand Medicare to include dental, vision, hearing. It will not I don't understand how if you're a congressperson who gets on television or on programs relatively easy, why can't you invest in, in like a fifty dollar microphone that you put in your fucking bag? Like why you gotta use your laptop mic? Like what what is this? the largest investment in tackling the climate crisis with massive investments in renewable energy and energy efficiency and it will have significant investments in I swear to god if I ever run into Ro Khanna I'm going to say here's a $49.99 mic it's a gift from me to you it's below the $50 gift limit so you can take this gift please use it infrastructure, including improving our broadband, replacing lead pipes, and upgrading our roads, bridges, and airports. It's and a he reps Silicon uh, Valley too. piece of legislation, and we need to pass it through both the House and Senate as is. Well, uh, Congressman, first of all, about the infrastructure bill. It is considerably smaller than what the president uh, wanted to, about a Thank fifth you, in Howling terms Amp, of you, new you money. For the tier two. Uh, Appreciate and that. Uh, a lot of the stuff was scaled back uh, for lead pipes, $15 billion when uh, removal of lead pipes when the president originally wanted $45 billion, and, and both estimates are that it will take $60 billion. Uh, so this is really a, a down payment uh, on a much bigger problem when it comes to infrastructure. I'm wondering, 
your sense, was it worth it to go through this bipartisan process to get such a whittled down, uh, a hard infrastructure bill? Well, first, let's see what they add in the reconciliation. I agree with you that the infrastructure bill was whittled down. It didn't have enough for lead pipes. It has nothing for climate. It doesn't have enough for broadband. My hope is some of that funding will be restored in the reconciliation bill, and especially the reconciliation bill uh, as we write it through the House. Uh, the reason that we had to go through the bipartisan process to get the reconciliation bill is we wouldn't get 50 votes for the reconciliation bill if we hadn't had to do the bipartisan process. So you're right uh, to point out the flaws of the bipartisan bill. Uh, it's why the Progressive Caucus has been clear that the reconciliation bill has to pass for us to support the bipartisan bill. The bipartisan bill is inadequate. But if we get the reconciliation bill, which I believe is one of the best uh, bills in uh, modern American history in making the investments we need, then it is worth supporting the inadequate bipartisan bill. And in terms of getting that reconciliation bill through the Senate, your sense at this point of where those those key lawmakers, uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, are, are standing right now? My sense is that they will ultimately vote for it, because if one or two senators reject it, they are at that point literally rejecting the president's entire agenda. It's important to note that the reconciliation bill is not Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren's agenda. It is Joe Biden's agenda. Everything in that bill uh, is something that President Biden ran on. So the question for every United States senator is actually very simple. Do you believe we should have the Mitt Romney agenda, which is basically the bipartisan deal? Or do you think Joe Biden, who was elected president of the United States, is entitled to his agenda? If you believe we should have the Joe Biden agenda, I don't see how you vote no uh, on the reconciliation package once the House sends it there. But what's going to happen? So one of the things, Chad, is... I hate to say this, but if Bernie Sanders and the progressives successfully leverage their power to get this reconciliation bill done, that would make Joe Biden the most significant president in American history going back to LBJ. He would instantly be a much better president than Obama, a much better president than Clinton, and all the Republicans, single-handedly, Joe Biden would become the most significant president since the great society under LBJ when he passed Medicare. That's the reality. Now, is it everything we want? Fuck no. It isn't. But it's a lot of shit. And it would have been because Bernie Sanders has pushed the Overton window so far to the left that even that neoliberalism of constantly constraining and reducing government spending and cutting back services and, and the constant feeling of austerity and rot will be over. It won't be a radical reconfiguration, but it will be a reconfiguration nonetheless. It will be a huge expansion of the benefits that Americans have as citizens. That would be huge. Is inflation going to be a problem going forward for Biden and the Democrats? Unlikely. Uh, we still have an unemployment rate that's uh, near 5%. Um, there is a lot of slack in the economy, um, both from the COVID, but we've never really, we've never really grew robustly since the Great Recession. So what's happening is Biden came in and the Democrats actually put the pedal to the metal with the government. They're actually threatening to put the pedal to the metal. They're actually threatening to stimulate the economy. Which we haven't, again, haven't seen for decades and decades and decades. So, you know, you go from a, a, a position where the engine is tuned lean to all of a sudden we're running rich, baby. And so it's going to take a moment for everything to start whirring and spinning. And I can tell you right now, investment is going to explode. 
investment is going to explode. And because there's just going to be, I mean, this civilian climate core, hundreds of thousands of jobs, good paying jobs. So many people, when the civilian climate core program actually gets started, a lot of the people in this community are going to have opportunities for jobs better than they've ever had doing real work and climate. It's going to be it. All of you, how many of you don't have paid sick days right now? You're going to have paid sick days. You're going to have paid family leave for the first time. Free community college. You want to learn, you want to get a trade, you want to get a skill, you'll be able to go to community college for absolutely nothing. Free. I was, when I saw that there was free community college, I was like, damn, is there anything I wanted to learn? Or is there any programs that I want to join and learn? I was like, shit. I'm kind of a tinkerer. I love to learn more about how to fabricate. I'd love to learn more about welding, about, about, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, getting into a garage. I thought of, I've thought of all sorts of, uh, of, of things I'd want to do, you know, restore an old car or an old plane, things like that, where I, you know, I know a little bit, but I don't know a lot of that stuff where it would be really cool to learn that kind of thing. That's just, and I don't need it. For the people that need that education, that's going to be an opportunity. And they're just, they're going to be investing in, in housing. There's just so much, Bernie has jammed so much stuff into this that it is really the end of neoliberalism as we know it. It is a t return to this kind of New Deal era, robust government spending a turn towards a social democratic america not a not a complete implementation of it we still have universal you know we still need universal health care we still need to get rid of student debt we still need to do more investment for climate change but it is a significant incremental step and that's what bernie sanders is doing right now uh probably a silly question but what is the prospect of this passing in the current form well we're going to be talking about that. Well, yeah, uh, back to a return of run of the mill liberalism. Taco Marks, you're, I don't even like, that hasn't been around for so long. People don't even know what it is. And the difference between the run of the, the liberalism of, to, uh, you know, this, this, uh, I would call it Keynesianism of today, the post, the, you know, the new Keynesianism, the neo Keynesianism, as opposed to the neoliberalism. The difference is, it's not racist anymore. Or at least, it was ex the New Deal had explicit racism in it. Maybe this new version of it will try to promote some equity. Manchin's statement on the $3.5 trillion. <clears throat> Early this morning, I voted yes in a procedural vote to move forward on the budget reconciliation process because I believe it's important to discuss the fiscal policy future of this country. However, I have serious concerns about the grave consequences facing West Virginians and every American family if Congress decides to spend another $3.5 trillion. Over the past year, Congress has injected more than $5 trillion of stimulus into the American economy more than any time since World War II to respond to the pandemic. The challenge we now face is different. Millions of jobs remain unfilled across the country and rising inflation rates are now an unavoidable tax on the wages and income of every American. These are not indications of an economy that requires trillions in additional spending. Every elected leader is chosen to make difficult decisions, adding trillions of dollars more to nearly 29 trillion of national debt without any consideration of the negative effects of our children and grandchildren is one of those decisions that has become far too easy in Washington given the current state of the economic recovery. It is simply irresponsible to continue spending at levels more suited to respond to a great depression or recession. Not an economy that is on the verge of overheating. More importantly, I firmly believe that continuing to spend at irresponsible levels put at risk our nation's ability to continue to to respond to unforeseen crises our country could face. I urge my colleagues to seriously consider this reality as the budget process unfolds in the coming weeks and months. This is literally means nothing. This means absolutely nothing. This is, this actually means nothing. First of all, the spending is over the next 10 years. This is the Joe Manchin move. 
happen with the Senate with Cinema and Mansion on the three and a half trillion dollar, um, which is more than infrastructure, a complete social safety net on the scale of FDR? As I said, that is Joe Biden's agenda, that plan, that $3.5 trillion is directly from what the White House proposed. It's directly from what President Biden ran on. Uh, I just don't see how any senator votes against it once push comes to shove. Sure, they may right now be making noise about things that they uh, want to see differently. But as long as we stick to the fact that the $3.5 trillion already represents a compromise, as you remember, President Bernie Sanders started out at six trillion, and that the three point five trillion doesn't have a single thing in there that President Biden didn't propose or run on. I am confident that we will not have a United States senator on our side vote against this president's agenda. And so this is the this is the plan because the bipartisan bill chat that the Democrats just passed out of the House with Republican votes will not come through the Senate unless there's a reconciliation bill. That was the pledge of Bernie Sanders and AOC and the squad. They have said they will not allow anything to pass without that. Shit. If someone could find me the like a beginning of this press conference, it'd be good. In, uh, June, that had not everything I would want, but many of the things I want. So we are making very good progress, and we're going to keep at it. It's so important. Yes. Two things. I'd say we're going to keep at it, and as I've said before, everything, everything is on the table. Yes, yes. Speaking of Senator Manchin, he put out a statement this morning concerned, saying that he's concerned about the price tag of the reconciliation bill. How do you navigate his concerns and Senator Sinema's concerns that the $3.5 trillion increase or the, the price tag is too much? Look, there are some in my caucus who may believe it's too much. There are some in my caucus who believe it's too little. The original bill that Senator Sanders put in was $6 trillion. I supported that. And, um, I can tell you this, in reconciliation, one, we are going to all come together to get something done. And two, it will have every part of the Biden plan in, big, in a big, bold, robust way. Manu, Manu, you can follow up. But are you open to lowering the price tag, or are you firm on 3.5 trillion? As I said, every part of Biden's proposal will be there in a big, robust way. There are some members in our caucus who want less, some members in our caucus who want more. That's same in the House. We're going to all come together to meet that goal. Yes. So apparently they want to get this all done by September 15th. Um, I want to see the beginning of that. Each night this week. You guys don't PM. mind. I want, to, I want to see the beginning of this. Of reconciliation. Oh. A, to keep it bipartisan, to stop making this a partisan. Now, by the way, chat, I'm sorry, I've, I've let him talk for the 10 minutes because uh, I just wanted to get the full full thing. And uh, this is something that I pointed out last year. And in fact, I brought it up again when I interviewed Ryan Grimm. Go to the YouTube channel, check out the Ryan Grimm interview. I talked to Ryan about this very issue that six to nine months into Biden's presidency, the Democrats let... Uh, a debt ceiling crisis happened. And the parliamentarian has just ruled that you could only have two reconciliation bills a year. So the Democrats had one reconciliation bill with the COVID relief bill earlier in the year. And now they have another bill, which is the, uh, the infrastructure bill, the reconciliation spending bill, however you want to call it. That's number two. So because their parliamentarian ruled you can only have two a year, and now they have a stupid debt ceiling crisis, they're not going to have a reconciliation bill unless they go back and overturn the parliamentarian, which gives the Republicans the ability to put the United States in some sort of fiscal crisis because they can't borrow the money they need to pay for the government. This is the type of dumbass shit Democrats do. They set themselves up for these manufactured political crises. 
is an issue because it's fraught with peril. Mitch <sighs> so McConnell stupid. seems to want to do that. I don't think he'll succeed. And second, because uh, reconciliation limits what you can do there, and uh, doing it outside gives you more flexibility. Yes. I'm just a bill. Yep. Sitting there on Capitol Hill. When you come back in September, what is actually going to change? The Republicans have built up this district, they'll continue This is something, this is, we have made progress, and we are showing very clearly to every one of our 50 senators that Republicans won't join us. And yet the importance of voting rights. This is another thing that, uh, uh, Ryan Grimm told me that the Republicans are, you know, they, they're going to get, they're going to get filibuster reform on voting rights, Mike. Remember the copium chat? Remember when Ryan was like, oh, don't worry. They're going to get filibuster reform on voting rights. Copium, copium, copium. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. So maybe Ryan's right. He's, he's got that feel. And Chuck Schumer is saying, we've shown to our caucus the Republicans won't work with us on voting rights. So I guess we'll have to see. I guess we'll have to see. It's if anything has strengthened in the minds of everybody. Everybody. And Senator Manchin put down a If you're honestly getting charged 50% more for groceries, I would suggest buying some groceries online. I hope that helps because there has not been a 50% increase in groceries across the board. There absolutely has not been. What we've seen is a big rise in rent. And there has been an increase in gasoline. But remember, gasoline prices were at a freaking like 10 year low during the pandemic. So it's natural that they would come up a bit as people are going out, out and about, about again. Uh, that's just going to happen. That kind of stuff happens. You know, these prices fluctuate. It was literally negative oil prices during some of the uh, pandemic. Literally, if you had the ability to take oil, they would pay you to take the oil. How long until widespread agricultural failure and food shortage? What? We got too much food. They're destroying it. Proposal back in uh, June that had not everything I would want, but many of the things I want. So we are making very good progress and we're going to keep at it. It's Two cars so on important. premium? Oh, no, yes. no, no, no. My house is up 53% in the last year. Holy eight. Wow. Congrats, I guess. Rich motherfucker, not even subbed. So before COVID and years of rent increases before since 2015, rents in Maine have gone up like 30%. Yeah, the rent is ridiculous. Rent is ridiculous. It's the, it's the worst thing. That's going on right now is the price of housing, man. How do you navigate his concerns and Senator Sinema's concerns that the $3.5 trillion increase... Hey, hey the Derek. The price tag is too much. Look, there are some in my caucus who may believe it's too much. There are some in my caucus who believe it's too little. The original bill that Senator Sanders put in was $6 trillion. I supported that. And you can literally see the Overton window working right now. Bernie Sanders has been right about everything. He comes in there and says, we're going to spend $6 trillion. Well, first he ran on $12 trillion, right? So he comes in now and he's like, $6 trillion. And they're like, oh, $6 trillion, oh. And Bernie Sanders has been so successful at moving the Overton window to the left that Republicans voted for a trillion-dollar infrastructure bill bipartisan, and the Democrats are going to pass a $3.5 trillion. Chad Byrne. Bernie Sanders is changing American politics, and it's amazing. And Schumer has to be like, I supported it, because he's scared shitless of AOC and the squad. Now we have the Democratic leader shitting his pants of being primaried by AOC and the squad, and Bernie Sanders is setting the agenda. Bernie Sanders. That's pretty, pretty great. Um... And so you love to see it, chat. You don't start the negotiation already compromised. Did you uh, take content ideas? It would be valuable to explain to people what causes inflation and how it's more than just QE, printing money, and low interest rates. The reasons are more complex than I think people realize. Well, it depends on the conditions. But uh, inflation, we've lived in an unprecedented deflationary period for such a long time that people don't even know what inflation is like. I mean, the interest rates of the Federal Reserve have been zero for 
forever or near zero for so long, people don't even know what it's like to have interest. The economy has been depressed for 20 years. So, you know what inflation helps, by the way, chat? Inflation helps people with debt. Do you have debt? Inflation helps you. That's everyone. I love inflation. Inflate more. Great. Make my debt worthless. And um, I can tell you this in reconciliation. One, we are going to all come together to get something done. And two, it will have every part Inflation of hurts the capital Biden more than labor. Exactly. Well, in big, depends. Well, in a big because if you have assets... So, you know, the price of the assets can inflate. It's really, it hurts financiers. Big, bold, robust way. Menu, menu. So wait, so just to clarify an earlier point you made, are you saying the looming shutdown is likely to kill the 3.5 trillion bill passing because it wouldn't be able to be passed via reconciliation? No. What I'm saying is, is the debt ceiling is bullshit in the first place. And hopefully the Democrats will finally be the party that destroys the debt ceiling once and for all, because it's incredibly stupid. I don't even want to explain it because it's that dumb, but I will. Basically, the debt ceiling... Okay, so the federal government works by the Congress appropriating funds, right? And then currently we... So the Congress says, we want to borrow money and we want to spend it on this. We want to collect taxes and borrow money and spend it on this, Right? And then there's a separate bill which says the United States of America can't borrow past this point. And traditionally, Democrat, you know, we would just raise that limit every time we bumped up against it because the, you know, the economy continues to grow, whatever. That is an arbitrary number that we came up with. And every time it just gets raised because it doesn't fucking matter. But in reality, that debt ceiling shouldn't even exist. If the Congress approves borrowing and spending money, why did, it shouldn't have to double approve borrowing the money. You already approved borrowing the money in the original appropriation bill. Why do you have a separate law about the debt total? Fuck that stupid law. Ignore that stupid bullshit. The debt ceiling is dumb. You can follow up. But are you open to lowering the price tag or are you firm on 3.5 trillion? As I said, every part of Biden's proposal will be there in a big, robust way. There are some members in our caucus who want less, some members in our caucus who want more. That's same in the House. We're going to all come together to meet that goal. Yes? Same. Um, can you address whether these bills are good? Chat's been being doomer pill to never satisfy leftists, and I was under the impression that the spending, while not enough, is a huge improvement for America. It's a gigantic improvement for America. It's a big deal. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's Democrat. You know, I mean... We've gone through this. The truth is that Bernie Sanders would have done more pro programs that were more effective and got you more bang for your buck. But he's creating a lot of new spending. And I, I feel like there's a certain type of leftist that now exists um, whose kind of default state is uneducated, unread, and kind of stupid, cynical. Where it's like, if something is happening, then it doesn't matter because it is happening. And it's this kind of self-reinforcing loop of, I never have to learn, I never have to pay attention, I never have to read. And I can just say, hey, it's not doing anything good because it's happening. And it's kind of this brain shut down stupidity. And, you know, that, I don't be that. Please, please don't be that. Uh, that is, that's not reality. Bernie Sanders is not going up there and doing nothing. All right. This is Bernie Sanders legislation. And yeah, he's going to Joe Biden and saying all the things Joe Biden promised when he ran against me, I'm going to make him do. Joe Biden doesn't want to do this 3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, but he's being made to do it. And it's going to help a lot of people. Is it everything we want? Of course, it's not everything we want. Bernie Sanders is a president, newsflash. But is a lot of this a really amazing shit that we've needed for a long time? Yeah. And a lot of people kind of have bought into this uh, way of looking at the world where if I'm not getting... If my banana split doesn't have sprinkles on it, then I don't even want ice cream. All right, motherfucker. You don't want any ice cream? That's on you. I'll eat it. Even without sprinkles. 
And then tomorrow, I'll demand sprinkles. That's how I operate. I, I take it. You give me something, I fucking take it and I demand more. You give me a cookie, I want a glass of milk. I don't turn down the cookie because you're not giving me uh, everything I want. I take it. I take it. I drink your milkshake. Uh, maybe it's too armchair psycho psychoanalyst of me, but from my own experience, the kind of perpetual cynical nihilism seems to come out of personal sense of their own life lacking any hope or joy. They can't believe something in the world could be improving because they don't feel it. So, you know, I get, st I get in this position of like, of course what's happening is good, but it's also not what we want. It's not the end goal. It's like having a baby and being mad they're not ready to go to college the next year. Like, that's just not what was going to happen. When Bernie Sanders didn't win the presidency, the Bernie Sanders program has is you have to go at a more circuitous route. But that doesn't mean nothing is happening matters. That's stupid. That's real stupid. And if you think everything is hopeless, you're not a leftist. Leftists are not leftists are not doomers okay leftists believe in the the inevitability of socialism leftists believe that capitalism contains within it the contradictions that will lead to its own destruction if you're a fucking doomer that think fascism will win and we're all gonna die then you're not a leftist you're some sort of like weird uh pessimist which is fine you could be a weird pessimist but you ain't being a leftist so, I'm going to take whatever I can, I'm going to recognize it is for what it is, and I'm going to use that win to get more wins. It's very simple. Winning begets winning. Losing begets losing. That's what you should know. And if, you got there, if you're out there screaming that it's a loss, then you're a dipshit. Losing begets losing. And I, I hate when I constantly see people wanting to lose. It's frustrating and annoying. The best example is the climate change doomers that think we're all going to die and say they won't have... I mean, listen, like, if you're a climate change doomer, then I just don't think we're on the same page. I'm not giving up. I understand where we... Where the... uh I understand where the negativity and the pessimism comes from. There's nothing, you know, I get it. But it's not time to give up yet. And anybody who says that it is, you're just wrong. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the New York Times here. Senate passes 3.5 trillion budget plan advancing sweeping safety net expansion of the blueprint which would expand Medicaid, provide free preschool and community college, fund climate change programs, pass along party lines, and faces an arduous path ahead. The blueprint which could set in motion the largest expansion of the federal safety net in nearly six decades faces a difficult road ahead as Democrats seek to flesh it out and turn it into law. One that will require their progressive and moderate wings to hold together with virtually no votes to spare. The legislation will not only provide enormous support to the kids of this country, to the parents of this country, to the elderly people of this country, said Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, the independent in charge of the Budget Committee, but it will also, I hope, restore the belief that in America that we can have a government that works for all, not just a few. People want to pretend this is just business as usual, just liberals doing liberal things using Senate procedures, said Senate Mitch, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the minority leader. Make no mistake. This reckless taxing and spending spree is like nothing we've seen. The blueprint now heads to the House where lawmakers will return early from a scheduled summer recess the week of August 23rd to take it up. But moderate Democrats are agitating for a standalone vote on the bipartisan infrastructure package, which could complicate efforts to swiftly pass the measure. Progressives have said they will not vote on the infrastructure bill until the House approves the budget package. Democrats have labored for months to reach this point, and there are many labors to come, said Senator Chuck Schumer of New York. But I can say with absolute certainty that they will be worth doing. The budget resolution will ultimately allow Democrats to use the fast-track budget reconciliation process to shield the legislation from a Republican filibuster. It will also pay the way, pave the way to expand Medicare to exclude, include dental, health, and vision benefits, fund a host of climate change programs, provide free pre-kindergarten and community college, 
and levy higher taxes on wealthy businesses and corporations. Moderates have begun to express reservations about the size and scope of the legislation. At least one Senate Democrat, Kristen Sinema, has said she will not support a final $3.5 trillion price tag despite voting to advance the budget resolution of that scope. But many liberals in both chambers have sought even more spending, and they conditioned their support for the infrastructure deal, which they believe Democrats scaled back too much to secure Republican votes on a passage of the budget blueprint. Senate Republicans sought to exploit some of those divisions through the so-called Voterama. Blah, 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 it doesn't matter. You're spending money like drunken sailors. The proposed changes, many of which were shot down along party lines, were non-binding and, and intended more to burnish a political case against the most vulnerable Democratic senators facing re-election in 2022 than to become law. Some Democrats said the brunt of their proposals would wait until the subsequent legislation was finished when changes could actually be adopted. The next Votorama is the one that actually matters because then you're firing with live ammo, ammo, said Senator Patrick Toomey, Republican of Pennsylvania. So I'm much more interested in that one than this one. Democrats work to remain in lockstep toward many of the Republican proposals, including a provision from Charles E. Grassley that will prevent changes to the cap on how much taxpayers can deduct in state and local taxes. Democrats from high-tax states, particularly in New York and New Jersey and California, have made raising or repealing the cap a priority and a partial repeal is under discussion to be included in the final legislation. Oh, that's bad. I'm against being a doomer on climate change, but I also think the reaction against it doesn't make sense when the layman doesn't fully understand the potential realistic scenarios we are headed toward, i.e. civilizational collapse. It seems like papering over reality before we even acknowledge it. Okay, so there's two things I would say about that. One, I don't believe you. Most people that do the doomer shit are not people that are actually acting like it's doom. They're not people actually acting like the world's going to end and they're going to die, okay? If you actually thought the world was going to end, wouldn't you be so radical? Unless you're suicidal, wouldn't you be doing some radical shit? You know, the very least would be like chaining yourself to block pipelines and stuff. You would be doing radical action if you actually thought you were under lethal threat You'd be doing radical shit. It mostly just seems like depressed people that want to lay around. They're not acting like they are really up against it and fighting with all their strength. So I don't know what to say. There are some people. I know some people that do that. I know some people that are out there literally getting arrested. Literally blocking pipelines, putting their bodies in front of the things, helping the water protectors. You know, those are the people that I believe. And they're not doomers. They're out there fighting because they think we can win. The people going, oh, we're all going to die sitting in your apartment. You're not. Yeah, no, nah, you're not acting like you believe what you're saying. The real doomers are the billionaires that buy compounds in New Zealand. They're just they're just hedging. They're hedging, which is what they always do. Why aren't you out there helping your friends, Mike? Pepe. OK, dude. OK, dude. They are the biggest doomers, Mike. That's why they are driven to that action. Exactly. Well, those people that are actually... Sh those are the real doomers. Those are the re people that actually believe what they say. And I support those people. They're awesome. If you're going to be... So, I'm not saying be optimistic because the status quo is going to result in, in a radical action. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that everybody that shits on thing that's, things that are happening, saying we're all going to die, you're useless. I agree with you about doomers, but no offense. If someone did feel that way, I could definitely see the idea of enjoying your own life. If you think there is no hope, means no hope. You don't want... Okay, it, well, the, if you're out there just enjoying your own life because you've, you know, you've decided to dedicate yourself to hedonism, you know, you've decided that the earth is going to explode, so the last, you know, your, your time on earth, you're going to spend it in you know, orgies and gorging yourself on your favorite food. Fine? But those people are not in my Twitter account telling me, um, the reconciliation bill is not good enough. We're all going to die. Uh. You're out there partying. You're not in my fucking Twitter. So if you want to dedicate yourself to hedonist excess because you think that the world is going to end soon, then why the fuck are you here? Why aren't you out there doing drugs and shit? People need a middle ground between becoming an eco-terrorist and living a good life. Most people just don't know what action to join. Doesn't mean they don't care. Ah, Antihero8. Thank you for a very intelligent comment. Support. Okay, so what do you need to do? What is the things that we can do? Well, first, there's obviously grassroots political action. 
Join your local organizations, your Democratic Socialists of America. Join your local activists. Join the Sunrise Movement. Join people that are actually demanding more from politicians and are also doing direct action. Get involved in your local area. Become aware of the environmental issues. Is there a pipeline trying to come through your area? Is there a new quarry? Get involved with your local environmentalists. They exist. I guarantee you about that. Get involved in politics. And it, that's the type of stuff that can make a difference. Now, are you one person? This is a global issue. Okay? It requires all of us coming together. And I, you know, this is an engine. Here's my perspective. This is an engineering problem. This is a systems problem. We can stop using fossil fuels. We have the knowledge. We just have to want to do it. When we look at the IPCC and their reporting, we know that they're tied up in national interests, so their projections are conservative. Do you think the powers that be will play down the reality of climate change to mitigate migration and panic? Well, you're not going to mitigate migration if there's a disaster. Like, that's not going to happen. Sorry, but you're not you're making zero sense. The world is not going to end all at once. It's not Y2K. Most people won't probably see the effects for two years. Okay, first of all, that's not true. We're already seeing the effects. We're already seeing the effects of climate change right now in wealthy countries. We're already seeing the effects of one degree C. We have droughts in the West. We have flooding in Germany. We have dangerous situations happening with the uh Gulf Stream. You know what? Let's watch something on that. Someone wants to comment on your partnership? Mike, what's going on, buddy? I thought you were supposed to be a tanky. What's all this? What's all this I hear about you doing a, a business deal with Jacob Bin and Co? You know, I think you need to spend a lot less time with Jacob Bin and a lot more time with my favorite newsletter, the Jacob Bin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read the Jacob Bin, Mike. Okay, this is not the link that I wanted to see. We do politics here every morning starting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. You can watch us here on Twitch. We're the morning guy. The morning politics guy. Politics frogs in every single day, same time, 10 a.m., day in, day out. And we carry you through your morning and early afternoon politics needs. And if you need more, Mike from PA, we have a YouTube channel. We talked about suburbs, the My Pillow guy, Ted Cruz. We talked about DSA. Amazing. Making fun of Tim Pool. Amazing. Look at all of these amazing videos. Get in there, watch them. We have me on Twitter. You got to follow me on Twitter, chat. I'm at 20,614 subs. That means I got like 40 followers on Twitter in the last day. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Go follow us on Twitter. And of course, join the Discord, where we have an incredible community of left-wing streamers. We have left-wing community. We talk about the stream. We talk about politics. There's gaming content. It's a really awesome, supportive place. Direct action, mutual aid. And you can just let off some steam. And also, you can help produce the show. One of the things I do is I look at the links that are put into the news content suggest suggestions chat room on the Discord. Join the Discord, come hang out, and uh, maybe what you want me to talk about will be part of the next show.